Hey guys, so sorry for the slight delay in videos. We got hit by a blizzard here, and I had a biology test today, so you know, I was pretty busy, but now I'm back talking about fairy tale. Now, I thought this would be a flashback chapter, but it was a bit different. Uh, Zeref basically just explains everything. I mean, they could have shown this in flashback, but it probably would have taken longer, and I'm kind of glad they did it this way. So it is revealed that, of course, Natsu was not able to defeat Zeref with that punch, because that would have been completely crazy, and yeah, if Mashima did that, like, there would be riots. But anyway, Zeref survived, and this is when he reveals to him the thing that pretty much everyone speculated that would be revealed during this fight. Uh, Zeref tells Natsu that he is his brother, he is and Ethereus Natsu Dragneel, and yeah. So most people assumed that was going to happen, but we didn't know what he was going to tell him afterwards, which was very, very interesting. I'm not quite sure how much of it is going to affect the plot right now, but it's just really interesting learning this backstory. We find out that Natsu, Gajil, Windy, Rogue, and Sting, all the Dragon Slayers, uh, are from 400 years in the past. That is when they were born. The dragons wanted to defeat Acnologia by training dragon slayers, but because the dragon's powers were weakening, they decided to raise these children and then send them into the future where the dragons could then become their soul magic or whatever. And July 7th in the year 777 wasn't the day the dragons disappeared, it was the day that all of the dragon slayers entered the future, and the celestial spirit gate that allowed them to enter the future was opened by none other than Lucy's mother. So yeah, there's some plot. Very, very interesting plot. Um, pretty crazy. Not, not gonna lie, I did not expect that at all. I expected Zeref to reveal that Natsu was end, but I, that whole thing with them going in the future, I had no idea, and it was pretty cool. And the reason that Zeref let Igneal train Natsu was because, not because he cared about Acnologia, because he doesn't care about Acnologia. He just wanted Natsu to become stronger so he would eventually be able to kill him. And Natsu doesn't want to hear any of this. It seems like he's kind of believes it, but he doesn't want to, and he starts trying to beat the crap out of Zeref, and Zeref's like, listen, if you kill me because you're one of my demons, you will die as well. Now, if you remember, Happy is there. Natsu is going to go all out on Zeref and defeat him, but Happy gets in the way. He's like, no, Natsu, we can't do this. I love how, like, Happy is, like, nothing compared to the strength of Natsu, yet Happy can still, like, stop him from going in from a full punch. Anyway, Happy's like, no, Natsu, you're my friend, man. I do not want you to die here. We are leaving. So they just fly off, and Zeref's like, yep, figured that would happen. We are still going to destroy the world! So yeah, this was just a really great chapter of Fairy Tale, one of the best in this arc so far. And man, I am so eager to see what is going to happen next, because Natsu now knows, after all this time, he knows that he is N, supposedly the only person who can defeat Seraph, and I'm really interested to see whether or not he's going to tell everyone. Because now that he knows he is end, it could be beneficial to everyone, but I'm, I'm worried about Grey. Grey made it like his life goal to defeat End, and I have no idea how he's going to react. I mean, people have been speculating this forever, but I have no idea how he is going to react when he finds out that Natsu is End. I mean, I would not be surprised if he just goes insane and starts trying to beat the crap of the Natsu, and then they have this big old fight. Um, but yeah, that, there's definitely some stuff going to happen there. I just don't know how soon everyone else is going to find out that Natsu is End. Also, this chapter made me curious again to see when Acnologia is going to come back, because that is awesome. Also, it doesn't seem like Natsu completely used up Igneal's power, because Happy stopped him right before he could finish off Zeref, so I do have a feeling Natsu will be able to use Igneal's power again. And then we also have all the other Dragon Slayers who can unlock this hidden Dragon Soul ability, whatever, to defeat Acnologia. So I have a feeling that that is going to come into play. I mean, how else are they even going to defeat Acnologia at this point? One more thing! Where the crap is Guildarts? Like, seriously, I think it's time now. This, this arc has been going on for a while. I have a feeling that if Gildarts was going to learn about this big battle that's happening, even though he's, like, you know, out in the woods, I'm sure he would have found out by now. So, yeah, Gildarts, you should, you should really get on that, because you are, like, the strongest person in the guild. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on this week's chapter of Fairy Tale. It was really awesome. I cannot wait to see what happens when Natsu goes back to Fairy Tale. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week for another Fairy Tale review. And I will see you tomorrow for the new Attack on Titan review. That is going to be hype as fuck.